Hey everyone, you're listening to episode number 121 of the Keto Diet Podcast. Today we're chatting about struggles on keto, finding balance on your ketogenic diet, changing your gym routine for better progress, and whether or not snacking is okay on keto. If you have questions about today's content, you can head on over to healthfulpursuit.com slash contact and ask me. Today's podcast extra, including the transcript, can be found at healthfulpursuit.com slash podcast slash E121. Okay, let's do this thing. You're listening to the Keto Diet Podcast, and I have a huge surprise announcement. So many of you were super jazzed about my 12-week Keto for Women program, Happy Keto Body, but needed a bit more time to register. Well, I've got great news for you. Happy Keto Body registration is extended to the end of the month. That means that you have until January 31st, 2019 at 11.59 p.m. Pacific to register. You can get all the details now at happyketobody.com. When you discover the perfect keto plan for you using happy keto body it makes all the difference between struggling feeling frustrated and falling off the wagon or overcoming your frustrations and imbalances to finally get the healthy sexy body you want even if you've always struggled with weight hormone imbalances or a specific health diagnosis even if you're menopausal postmenopausal perimenopausal happy keto body is for every woman who wants to take control of her health kick her cravings and finally feel amazing in her body all the details are at at happyketobody.com and I'm super excited to see you on the inside. Now on to the show. Today's guests are Matt and Megha, who run a ketogenic food blog, ketoconnect.net, and a YouTube channel where they share weekly low-carb recipes and informational vlogs. They also host a podcast called Keto for Normies that features guests in health, nutrition, and the fitness industry. I did an earlier interview with Matt and Megha that you can check out in episode 74 called 11 Keto Lessons to Avoid Failure, so I'll link that up in the show notes, and what's really cool about about today's episode is all these lessons are completely different from what they learned last year. So it's really cool to build on that. If you're looking for more answers to common keto questions like what we cover today, and you have a copy of my program, The Keto Beginning, check out page 54 five and onwards for some of those answers. I also covered how to overcome newcomer rules in pages 92 to 102. You can find out more by going to healthfulpursuit.com slash begin. Also in today's episode, we chat about Costco and navigating Costco with keto, how to choose the right products. I put together a freebie for y'all. It's totally free. You can head on over to healthfulpursuit.com slash Costco to check that out. Oh my gosh, so many links, so many cool things to share with you guys this week. Let's cut over to this interview. Hey, Matt. Hey, Mika. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. so good. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having us. Round two. Round <laughs> two. Let's do this. And you guys recently celebrated your one year podcast anniversary. Yes, we did. And it's it doesn't feel like we've been podcasting for a year, but l listening back to the older episodes, we've definitely like fine tuned the skill of asking, interviewing, interviewing hard, asking yeah. questions. It's really difficult. It so is. And sometimes I have a question and I don't write it down quick enough. And then I forget what the person said and it's like, it takes time. Yeah. <laughs> so we definitely uh, appreciate being on this end of it. So we don't really have to do much. <laughs> it's so much easier to just talk, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we get into today's chat, I'd like to ask all of our guests, uh, maybe each of you separately, what does keto mean to you? Okay. Keto to me, I mean, the basic level would just be any diet that puts you in ketosis, but that's like really simple. I guess to us now, it means a lot more than that. It's like more of a way of life, like taking your health back from corporations and the government and just kind of like, you know, making your own educated decisions, not just like trusting in our overlords on like, like, you know, eat your 12 grains, just actually making your own decisions. Yeah. For me, it definitely means like I'm allowing myself to be open to just bettering my life overall, not just my diets. So like I'm working out a lot more. I'm looking for like better quality foods and 
you know, connecting the way I feel to the foods I eat, which I never did prior to the keto diet. So I think it's just, it's overall like a better, healthy, happier lifestyle for me. Mm, Beautiful. And because, I mean, you guys talk to so many people, you have so many followers, you interact with a bunch of people all over. What are like the main struggles you see people going through right now in keto where you're like, oh man. Yeah, I th- honestly, I think it's kind of unchanging since our entire time doing this. It's just like a lot of confusion on trying to get everything right at once because people are really afraid of wasting time. They just want everything laid out for them. Here's the blueprint. If I do this, I lose weight. I look hot. I feel better, that, that type of thing. So there's just like a lot of questions like what breaks a fast? Do I need to be doing intermittent fasting? Do I need to exercise? Like a bunch of the, the general questions that seem to be problematic. But I think just like mega said going tying your daily actions to how you feel that kind of just you know sets everything in motion to take care of itself so like when you start realizing i went for a significant part of my life without even doing this like i would just eat pasta for for lunch and then i would I need to take a nap at 2 p.m and i was like no way those things are correlated no chance and you start doing stuff like that and you just start realizing so then exercising when you exercise you feel good for the rest of the day so I think that's a lot of it. Yeah. And I I think like the unfortunate truth is that most of people who come to the keto diet strictly do it for weight loss because they want to look good. They want to drop pounds quickly. Like if you look at advertisements in magazines, it's like 11 pounds in three days with the keto diet. And and I, I hate that because there's so much more to it. Like we've talked to so many people where they'll talk about how weight loss is a side effect. It's not like the reason you come to keto. You come to keto to like more productivity, better energy, like hormone balance, you know, better periods for women. And people just come for the weight loss and they don't focus on the other benefits. And so then they're tied it up with the scale. They're like stressed, like, why am I not losing anything? But they're not focusing on all the other beautiful benefits that come along with it. Well, the funny thing is, is the people that are actually like in it for the health, they're the ones who lose the most weight because they're, they're doing it sustainably and they don't just, the scale every morning doesn't dictate their mood. Yeah. Mm, yeah, you're so right. Because that mood shift when you jump on the scale and it's not what you want to see, it completely changes the course of your day, week, month experience overall, and is quite detrimental to your overall goal anyway. Would you agree? Yeah, it really is. For me, sometimes when I step on it, I'm like three pounds light in the morning. I'm like, okay, we're having extra dessert tonight. Yeah. And for me, it's so severe um, from tracking like years and years that I just put the scale away. And now Matt and I, we don't weigh ourselves maybe like once a month. If we feel like, you know, just a check in, cause you gotta be accountable still. You can't just like, you know, pretend you're not putting on or losing weight, but I've put it away and I just feel so much better. It allows me to just eat comfortably, feel sexy in my own body and focusing on like the gains in the gym as opposed you to You look like, in the mirror all the time though. I am obsessed with looking in the mirror <laughs> and that's my one Bastard. like flaw. <laughs> but I don't weigh myself and that's just taken so much stress away from my day. Back to today's episode in a sec. Today's episode is sponsored by Perfect Keto. Perfect Keto creates the ultimate products for making the keto lifestyle easier and more effective. All of their products are dairy-free, made in the USA, gluten-free, doctor-approved, and use zero fillers. From exogenous ketones to boost your ketone levels for mental clarity, keto bars for a quality fat snack, MCT oil powder for making your coffee fatty and creamy without the dairy, and so much more. You can get 20% off anything in their shop by going to perfectketo.com slash KDP. Use the coupon code KDP for your 20% off anything your heart desires. If you're unsure of the link, simply check out today's show notes for all the details. Okay, back to today's episode. Mm, it's it's quite interesting. So the last time we chatted, well, very briefly, when you guys were doing a book signing in Austin, but the last time we chatted was probably last year, maybe, or or I, actually, I was on the side of a road somewhere, and you were interviewing me for your podcast, and I don't even, I think it was California. How much you guys have adjusted your message and your experiences as of late, I've definitely noticed um, on all your platforms, and even chatting with you now. It feels like something shifted with, would you agree? Like something, something's changed with you too. <laughs> I would say so. Well, I think at first when we started Keto Connect, it was also when we first started the keto diet and we were coming from a standard American diet, I guess. I was like a vegetarian, but it wasn't, it was just like, you know, snacks, a lot of snacks and stuff. 
and just kind of looking for like a quick fix more so. But then we started it and we liked it a lot. So we, we continue to do it. But as you like progress, and I guess as our following has grown, I feel more accountable and responsible for delivering like accurate, really good information. So it's hard to, I don't know, like now I think a lot of just like Whole Foods obviously is best. But so that's more of what we focus on, like Whole Foods nutrient density. But it's also you got to think about the people that were in our situation. We were in three years ago, which is like, they're still like my mom. Should they still just go to the grocery store, buy Lay's potato chips? So those people, they don't really care about like nutrient density, food quality. They just care about or what's best for them is probably something that's simple to stick to but is also more towards a keto diet, like lowering the carbs. Because if you're sitting on the couch, like most Americans, you don't need 400 grams of carbs a day. Like what, what's a typical American diet? Yeah. And that being said, I think our, a lot of our message has definitely still shifted in the sense we still have to be true to ourselves. So yeah, there's a lot of beginners out there and we do eat Quest bars and Quest chips and enjoy those snacks, but we're also eating more nutrient dense foods, better quality foods. So we are sharing those experiences as well. And so people kind of get conflicting messages. They're like, are you eating snacks or are you only eating steak and veggies? And it's like, there's a good balance. You, you can do both and you can enjoy life and the diet. And then for me personally, a lot of shifted as just as a woman, and I don't know if it's that, that, that it's with my age or like just living longer and, you know, seeing how people feed into social media so much, but I just like love myself so much more. And we've talked about this before, Leanne, you're a big advocate of like loving your body, no matter where it's at. And I've been working out so much more. And so I want to put on, like, I want my physique to change. And so that doesn't mean the scale has to change. And that doesn't mean I have to eat as little as possible to be as skinny as possible. Sorry. And so for me, I think I just, I care so much about who I am internally as much as I do externally. And so internal health will always lead to external health. And I think that takes time for people, you know, growing up in our society, I think it's hard to just focus on like, you know, internal health all the time, but there's so much more to life than just like looking sexy in a bathing suit. Agreed. I totally agree. And something that I love that you just said is, is meeting people where they are. I think, you know, when I first studied nutrition, oh gosh, that would be like 12 years ago. I was very much like, if you go to McDonald's once, you're a bad human, like just don't do it. And then over time, it's like, that's not realistic. And that wasn't realistic for me when I was learning about my body and health. I was still going to McDonald's, you know, three times a week instead of five. And that was a huge win. And I think that that's what's so important when you first get started on keto of like, if it means cutting it down by 20% and then 50 and then slowly to 100, I think it's really important. And you guys have that perspective of being on keto as long as you have now to be like, it's different when you first start to two, three, four, five, six years down the road, it's going to shift. And I think that that's great to see in your content and you can really meet people where they are. Yeah. Well, I noticed a Pandora's box effect where it's like, when we first started, it was like, yeah, you go get the Hellman's mayonnaise and you, you know, you add fat to your diet, like, like that. But now we know like about soybean oil and just like you continue to learn. So it's hard to really recommend that now that we know, we just know more, mm -hmm. we, we're continually learning. And yeah, so I think that's a lot of it for sure. But someone starting out, if you're still doing Hellman's mayo, that's, that's probably better than, you know, like granola bars. Yeah. Totally. Totally. And I think a lot of people lose sight of that, but I agree. It's, it's challenging in the, so I'm writing a cookbook right now. We're in like the final stages of it. And I decided to do more like conventional foods. Like you can use ranch dressing here. And if you don't want to use ranch dressing, cause it's not all that great, then here's how to make it yourself. But I think you're right. You know, if you are deciding between, should I have Hellman's mayonnaise and a granola bar? choose the mayo, like, and, and just get, um, ketones getting going in your body and then you can figure out the rest later. So it's cool, um, to see that transition. How is yeah, it? I yeah. I was going to say, I think the biggest struggle is like, how do you get people to adhere to the diet? Cause we make certain videos and then people are like, Nope, you should be cooking all of your meals. You should only be eating whole foods. And it's like, if people actually did that, this, we wouldn't have a YouTube channel. Like no one would need our information because no <laughs> one does that. Like, like 10% of people actually cook food. So yeah, a lot of people still go to the store, they buy prepackaged food. You need to eat out of convenience a lot of the time. So you're more productive. Like people have jobs and kids and stuff. So it's hard for everyone to cook. Do people actually cook 100% of their meals all the time? 
We do, I think. Well, like like ninety eight percent, we do. Yeah, ninety eight. But, but, but I, I highly doubt the people commenting do, though. Yeah. You know, it's it's easy to like sit behind a computer and be like, you should be doing this while you're eating your donut. You know. <laughs> That's so true. I mean, I I would have to say, you know, five years ago, I cooked most of my meals, but I find the busier you get, the less time you have to make the things, and I end up eating like well, packaged things that are just sitting right beside me. Like I just need to eat something I'm recording all day. So I think it's important. Okay. Let's chat about, cause we were chatting just before we started recording about your podcast and how, you know, meeting with other people and learning from them is influencing your transition. How has that changed for you over the last year? And what lessons have you learned that you definitely didn't know before starting? That's that's a tough one. Yeah, we've learned a so lot much. for sure. Um, talked to a lot of awesome people. And we just recently actually did a podcast episode. What episode is it? Where we review all of our takeaways. 71. 71. If you want to check it out, Keto for Normie 71. But I guess some of the biggest ones for me is over the past year is like, just more understanding what nutrients are really important in your diet. Like I just always thought, you know, vegetables, they're healthy because, you know, people say to eat them. My mom says they don't taste good. You got to like force down the bad, the, the food that's good for you. That was kind of always my perception. And just kind of understanding like fat soluble vitamins really seem to be the cornerstone of a healthy diet and just shifting my perspective more to that. So like, Getting a lot of nutrition from animal foods is definitely something we both do. Not making like the hugest of effort to force in a ton of veggies, but you know, when they're, we cook them generally for dinner, um, they're tasty and they're good for adding fat to your diets too. Um, just like, you know, putting butter on them and stuff. But that's a big one, just kind of a shift in paradigm to like animal foods are pretty healthy most of the time. Yeah. There's so much we've learned, but I think for me, the biggest takeaway is like just doing what feels right for me. If uh, That's really simple, but we learn so much from everyone and you can't apply all these like, you know, everything everyone says, right? So you got to find what works for you. So experimenting with that and then doing what works for me and not forcing my eating style and my foods to fall in line with Matt. Cause when you have like a partner you're always with, it's easy to just like do everything together. And I'm sure you, you and Kevin probably oh, have the same. Yeah. Yeah. And so realizing that like, even if Matt's eating a steak and I don't want a steak, I can eat chicken thighs, even though chicken thighs aren't regarded as highly as steak, you know, like just doing what works best for me. And I just always come up with new stuff. Like I'm j I just watched a YouTube video. Let's try this for the next yeah. two weeks. He's all over the place. And I'm just like, I want some routine. I like to just, you know, if my body feels good on one thing, I want to do that thing. And especially for women, we had a podcast with Lily Nichols. And so we're, we're starting a family plan. And so just like filling my body with more nutrient dense, better quality foods, because I'm preparing to like, you know, not only age, but like maybe have a baby in my belly one day. And so like the quality of my food content has highly changed from the year of podcasting, talking to everyone, Mike Mutzel, like gut health. I don't, you know, like gut health, you know, I'm not sure where, where I fall in terms of like, what's the best for it, but I focus on it. You know, I do what I can. I stress less because that impacts your gut health. That impacts your day to day. I sleep better. So there's so many like little biohacks you can do for life. John Lemansky, there's so many good ones. <laughs> oh, there are so many, just like you could just chat with them for hours and like soak up all the knowledge. <laughs> Um, okay. So we've chatted about beginners and how to start. We've chatted about weight loss and you touched on a little bit of muscle building. And I know that you guys are pretty focused on that right now. So can we chat about when you first started the whole muscle stuff and going to the gym and all those things, how has your perception of things changed from then to now? And what are you doing now? What lessons have you yeah. learned there? Well, we've always kind of focused on the muscle stuff, but we just weren't doing it very effectively. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, the biggest shift lately, what we've been doing is instead of just going purely for aesthetics, I think, and like bodybuilding style workouts, actually doing more of like a powerlifting routine and mm -hmm. tracking your lifts. So it's actually really freeing because we, we follow a program and, you know, one week you'll go in and you'll do like 225 and then the next week you do 235 and you just know that you're supposed to be able to do this. So there's like a little bit of confidence behind it where you're not going in every time you're like, how much can I do today? It's just like, oh yeah, I did this last week. So logically this makes sense. I should be able to do this today. And the biggest change we've made in the past like six months that I recommend everyone do, people always recommend this, but no one really does it. I never did. Is you track your lifts. Yeah. 
So every time, get a notebook, or I just use my phone, an Excel spreadsheet, track your lifts, and you should be increasing. You can even find some programs that are structured to have you increasing slowly over time. And obviously, just like shifting your perspective a little bit mm -hmm. is big too, because we get all the time comments is like, you guys have been lifting for so long, and you're still not jacked. And it's yeah. like, the internet has a very distorted perception of what working out does. Like, I mean, the guys in the Mr. Olympia, they're juicing like crazy. And even most like fitness people on the internet, there's, they're not just doing it all by the book. Yeah. Or, or they've been doing it for like 10 to 12 years. And that's the biggest thing. It's, it's like we see transformations, like five, six, seven year transformations. So they've been going into the gym, working really hard for years and years on end, and they get these incredible bodies. But it, it seems like, you know, it took a couple months. And so that's what I've realized after doing, um, we're doing the juggernaut training method. So strength training, we've been doing it for six months straight. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the biggest change in my body. And I think that's just the consistency. It's not even the diet, but it's the consistent working out, hitting my lifts, and just focusing on like, day over day and like knowing that it'll take years. And I don't want to like look ripped in six months. I want to look ripped in five years because that's realistically how long it takes. So yeah, just changing my mindset and knowing that it's not going to happen overnight and I need to fuel my body and then push myself in the gym however I feel that day and also taking rest days when you need the rest days. And if you looked ripped after lifting for six months, everyone would be ripped and then no one would care about being ripped. Or you're, you're using steroids and then yeah, you're, you're questioned. <laughs> your question. I like that. When it comes to uh, just circling back to food, when it comes to sweeteners, I know you guys did a video a while ago about like bust and I link to that video all the time because it's just so great for sweeteners. Any changes in lessons you've learned around sweeteners and what you're gravitating toward now as opposed to when you started keto? Yeah, I think our, our recipes on our food blog and just our day-to-day -day consumption has changed in terms of how much erythritol we like to use. And erythritol is great. You could totally subtract it. It doesn't impact your blood, blood sugar, ketones at all. But you know, the digestive impact, we just like to stay away from anything that can mess with your gut a little. So we'll use like, we'll sub in like half liquid stevia because we found that doesn't really impact you as negatively. And then the bitter taste is cut if you use half erythritol. So like that's, that's as far as baking goes. That's really the main one. Yeah. And I think just as keto becomes more popular, it seems like it's at peak popularity now. But uh, there's just a lot of people that have food blogs and stuff. And, you know, they come from a traditional maybe baking background. And it's like, like oh, this pound cake, four cups of sugar. Like, that's what a standard American dessert oh. recipe is. So then when they're like four cups of erythritol, it's like, y'all don't know what you're doing over there. Yeah. So you that's can't really so eat that. That's so expensive. That would be like that too. two bags. That's like yeah. $20. <laughs> Yeah. And especially like for holidays, people try making food for their families, like mm -hmm. desserts, keto desserts for their families. And if they've never had erythritol before and you just bring them like a two cup of erythritol bomb, it's not going to go over that well. <laughs> yeah. So definitely like subbing in some liquid sweeteners like monk fruit or stevia cuts through that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I that's think a really good tip. Back to today's episode in a sec. Some people choose to do plant-based keto, others do carnivore-based keto, and I'd like to think I'm somewhere in the middle, loving meat and plants. I thrive on the right kind of animal protein, protein from healthy animals, animals that get treated fairly, have happy lives on pasture, and are raised ethically. This is why I choose to eat grass-fed and finished beef, free-range chicken, heritage-bred pork, and wild fish. I'm so happy I can get these options from ButcherBox, a meat subscription service I've used since 2016. Listeners of the show get two pounds of free wild Alaskan sockeye salmon this month. All you have to do to claim your free salmon is go to butcherbox.com slash keto diet between now and January 31st, 2019. Order a box and get your two pounds of free wild Alaskan sockeye salmon at butcherbox.com slash keto diet. Okay, back to today's episode. I think there's been a big change just in like, in terms of keto products, like a lot of more companies are using erythritol, stevia, monk fruit, you see, which is great because people do need the products. And so like, there's good products out there that use better sweeteners and we're not like, oh, is this bar okay? Or is this a bar not okay? Mm -hmm. And it's like less of a guessing game, you know? Mm -hmm. And speaking about bars and processed snacks and all the things that we were chatting about previously, do you find yourself gravitating towards certain products that maybe didn't exist? I mean, we're talking like so much stuff is coming out right now. It's hard to keep track, but do you have like favorites and what do you look for and what lessons have you learned when it comes to like, don't touch this product, but I don't mind this sort of thing just for people that have like limited time. 
to make yeah them. we definitely have our favorites we eat the, like after dinner we typically will have some kind of processed snack of some kind yeah um the two big ones that you want to look out for is imo fiber that's in a lot of protein bars and stuff mm-hmm. and it's like if, if it says like 10 grams of fiber from imo fiber it's really like five grams of carbs it's partially digested so we just stay away from those completely for the most part um a lot of the bars at like Whole Foods and stuff will have that. And then maltitol, of course, is the big one. Like if you get the, if you go to the sugar-free candy section at Walmart, the entire thing is just maltitol. It's digestive distress. That's, they should label that section. But it also impacts your blood sugar, maltitol. Yeah, that too. So if you watch that video uh, that you were referencing, the sweetener video, it's like comparable to sugar, like, like 80% of a glucose rise similar to sugar. And uh, the ones we like, what do you like? Quest chips are my favorite. Really? I didn't know that about you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm obsessed. So Quest makes a lot of like science project type stuff, but they're so good. Yeah, I know. It's hard to resist. But the chips, chips. they're super like low in carbs. Yeah, it's whey protein. It's not great, but it's only four total carbs. So if I'm going to go for something, I'd go for that over like the Quest bar, which is 25 total carbs. It's by far the best chip replacement that exists other than pork rinds, I guess. Oh, that's, that's dangerous. Have you tried chicken chips? No, no, but we've seen those. Are they we really need to good? order those. Your face says we have to order them. <laughs> I mean, they do have, I think it's, is it tapioca starch? So there is a little bit of starch. So they're not like full blown, like no carb, but dang. Worth. Okay. okay. They're we'll worth try it. Those. <laughs> we'll have to do a review. We love yeah, like keto salt bars. And vinegar. We love uh, keto bars also, like IQ bars. IQ we bars. order. Have you? And, they're amazing. And then Mega always gets these Boo Foods bars. Yeah, those are those are pretty good. Yeah, those. Yeah, so we like we like our fair share of bars. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. I do too. Like packets, bars, anything that I can carry around if I'm like busy, which seems to be frequent. I think it's always good too. And a lot of people say. I guess maybe I should ask you what your thought is when people say on the internet, well, keto means you shouldn't snack. So why are you? Why are we even talking about snacking? Thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, if you need to snack, you're obviously doing the diet wrong. That That's the way they'll frame it typically. Yeah, you're not yeah. fat adapted. What are you guys doing over there? Snacks? You shouldn't need to snack. You should need to eat once every six days. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, actually, I think so. I don't really like snacking j- the way that I used to, like on a standard American diet where it's like, oh, 10 a.m. I'll just have like a handful of almonds. I honestly don't snack too much unless I'm just really hungry that day. But we'll have snacks because we like food a lot. So we like to try different foods. So typically like after dinner, when I'm kind of full, I'll have a snack or two. And I'll just kind of like incorporate that into my dinner like a dessert. I'm not really big on snacking just on its own like midday. But if if that's what you need also because you're accustomed to it. A lot of transitioning from a standard American diet to keto isn't necessarily like hunger. It's a lot about habits. So if you're snacking on chips at 2 p.m. at work, maybe snacking on almonds at 2 p.m. at work, that's like step one. And then step two is no snacking, right? Yeah. Um, and then I like, though, that we do snack and that you snack and we make that known because people are scared to do things when they read on their Facebook group, like, don't eat carrots. That's not cute. Or like, you know, just like the dumb little things that people get hung up on. And so snacking is a normal part of life. I love to snack. And what we've been doing recently and it's been huge for me is Saturdays we'll do like a keto cheat day. So every single set. So during the week we just, you know, we have our routine, we're working anyway. So it's like easy to stay two large meals, some snacks, but then Saturday it's like our day off where we'll relax. We'll watch shows. We'll go out to dinner and we can just snack if we want to, and we can eat what we want to. And we're not so focused on like the calories or the makeup of the foods, because sometimes I just need that. And like, it helps me like stay mentally satisfied all week long. If Saturday, I'm just like, this is just my day to just do whatever I want, eat whatever I want and take it easy. I hope you're totally digging this episode. I love putting these together every week and I hope you're getting something out of it. I love seeing where you're listening from. So next time you're listening or even right now, take a picture of yourself watching the show or a screenshot of your favorite episode and tag me on Instagram at healthful pursuit. And if social isn't your thing, that's totally fine. Just jump on your favorite podcast player and leave a review for the show. Okay, back to the good stuff. Mm, Would you have been able to do that when you first started keto? Or is that, do you think, something that developed over time with your relationship to food and your body and all the things? 
That's a really good question. I don't. So personally, I don't think that would have worked well for me in the beginning. I think I needed to just really like understand my relationship with food and eat foods that like filled me up and see how they made me react. And like, if I was tired or like groggy or whatever the case is and having like at least a couple months and, you know, we snacked in the beginning quite a bit, but I think we, we did our best to just like stay on target so that we knew how we felt when we were off target. It's interesting you say that because that's actually what I used to focus on a lot is like what foods fill me up so I don't have to eat as much calories. You know, that was like a big part of me thinking about what I'm eating. And now I don't think as much about that. It's taken me a long time to get to this place for sure. But like nowadays, like we're making dinner and I'll just have like as much of that dinner as I want basically it's usually like steaks, veggies, like adding fats to it. But I'm not as much in a mindset of like, you know, like eating rice cakes, like eating rice cakes is just the worst mindset to be in. It's like, here's this thing that's really big. It tastes like cardboard, but it's 10 calories. Yeah. (laughs) So it's like, that's not the way human beings operate. Like in ancient times, was it like, let's find all of these really low calorie foods so we can just eat all day. No, you just like ate the most caloric and nutrient dense foods and the rest took care of itself. Yes. I've been practicing that a lot lately where I'm starting to bring fasting back now that I have a better relationship with it and I won't eat most of the day. And then there's an eating window where I really don't care about the density of anything. And I'm just like eating until I'm really full. And if that was one meal, great. If it was two meals, great. If it was a meal and a snack, great. But you're right. We, you know, years and years ago, we weren't like, how can we just extend our, you know, our hunger just a little bit longer? Now it's a matter of like just eat until you're full and you're satiated and if that happens to be one or two meals a day three meals a day who cares it's just about packing it all in there so yeah. that's, that's another thing too about intermittent fasting is i think 90 percent of people just like being raised in modern day america you have some kind of distorted issue with food right it's not like just because like you're not made to to, to eat snickers bars in moderation that's that's not a human trait So I think a lot of times people will just try jumping into all of this as like the fix to their underlying issues. That's what I did for sure with intermittent fasting. I thought, oh, if I only eat in this like eight hour window, then I won't eat as much food again. But I think now we do kind of like intermittent fasting, but we're just like in a better place overall. Yeah. I don't fast if I don't feel like it. Like it's not that big of a deal. You don't have to do all these little things. And we always get the question, will fasting mean more weight loss? And it's like, uh, maybe like it depends. Do you eat less in that fasting window? Should you be eating less? Like what does your body need? And so if I wake up and I'm hungry, I will eat it. I will eat what I want to eat. And then I'll just go about my day. You, you can't like force things, I think, you know, cause it just, it makes it, it more stressful and life harder. And like, you don't enjoy the process and the journey of like the keto diet. Mm, yeah, totally. And speaking about forcing, like forcing things, I know when I first started keto, I thought that you were supposed to feel miserable, horrible until I realized electrolytes were quite important. Um, and I forced myself through all of that without supplementing with electrolytes because I figured no pain, no gain, right? Do you see a lot of people struggle with the whole keto flu thing when they first get started? And how would one navigate that? How did you guys? Ooh, I don't think we navigated it that well. No, we laid in bed I don't, <laughs> for five days straight. I don't think rules apply to me. I just think I'm like a special specimen that, oh. you know, the, the, rule, the rules go out the window. So I didn't really like, you know, listen to the electrolytes thing much at all. And I didn't know enough. Now I think there's more information out there. There's like keto, keto aid uh, recipes and stuff online. And people more understand that you need to supplement electrolytes. Mm-hmm. But um Yeah, I guess the two things when you're first starting that you may have trouble with is one, of course, the electrolytes. You need to supplement those a lot. And some people think like Powerade Zero, it has like 35 milligrams of potassium. It's not a lot. You need to drink like 15, 20 Powerades. Yeah, a real simple plan to get electrolytes in. They sell this stuff at the grocery store. It's like light salt or new salt. That has, I think, 50% potassium in it. Mm -hmm. So just use that add extra salt and you probably need to buy a magnesium supplement for like before bed. I like to take it. And then the other thing is fat. So people, when they start keto, it's kind of like they just remove a bunch of stuff. They remove all the carbs and the American diet is like very low fat. We're fat phobic. So you're not going to have a lot of fat in the diet to begin with. So you're basically just like eating protein and almost no calories. That's what a lot of people do. So they feel low energy for that reason too. So it takes some time for your body to actually use fat for energy and you feel like your old self again. But when that happens, you also need to be getting fat in 
in excess to like replace the 400 grams of carbs you were eating previously. Yeah. And then a good pure planet sports salts. That's what we have. We that's like to travel too. with that. It's pills. So it's really easy for traveling. And we were in Europe over the summer and I made sure to take two every single day. We were walking a ton, drinking a ton. So that's a good way to just get them in um, and take with you into travel. And then as far as electrolytes, I've actually found, because we've done like really low, low carb, like 10 grams a day, which is, I mean, I don't think I'd ever go back to that. And we've done like higher carb, but I found that when I was really low carb, I needed more electrolytes. So that, you know, maybe experimenting, if you're not feeling like, well, or you're past the keto flu, but you're still feeling really crappy, then maybe see where your carbs are at and adjust your potassium up, adjust your sodium up because sodium and potassium negate one another, like they balance. So the more potassium you have, the more sodium you can have and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And what are you guys working on right now? What are you, what are you all lit up about? What, what's happening in your world? We, I don't think we've told anyone this yet, but we're working on something. It's called Project X. We can't tell too much about it, but it's Ooh. going to hopefully be, can I say? Yeah, it's a product. It's, a, it's like a food product. So Exciting. We're, yeah, yeah, we're working on that. We've been working on it for like a year. We've like pivoted a few times. Uh, it's tough, man. So, and I, also we like learned so much about, you know, because we've looked at all these low carb products, what ingredients they use, why they use them. How things interact and they form and like yeah. how they taste and like texture. It's all so big. So there's, there's a reason there's no like low carb bars that are, you know, just checking all the boxes, like perfect ingredients, perfectly shelf stable. That's like food's not supposed to sit on a shelf in a brick form and just, you know, open the package and eat it. That's not, that's not what food does. So that's something we're working on. Uh, cookbook number yeah. two. Cookbook oh, number you two. Are. Okay, when yeah. is that coming out? Um, it's due at the end of January. So I believe in like April or May. It's so much work. Like oh. I, it's always a great payoff. Like holding it, it's beautiful. You know, seeing people cook from it is amazing. And then you have the same feeling, but like the work it takes. Might I know. Be the last one. I know. We're like, how do people, you're on your third one. Like how do, how do you do like eight? I know like Jimmy Moore does a ton. Like it's just so much like work. Maria, how is she an actual yeah. human? Like let's talk about that does. for a second. She has a clone or she's like a cyborg or something like. Well, she has kids too. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't even know. Well, that's really exciting guys. I know cookbooks are like the worst until they're not. And you're on yeah. tour and you're meeting people and you're like, I want to do another one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. And then one other thing we have, we have eBooks also. We have three of them now. There's a fat bomb one. There is a uh, slow cooker one and dinner in 30, 30 minutes. Yeah. So if you just go to ketoconnect.net, those are all on the homepage. You can check those out. Yeah. So we're just trying to provide as many resources as possible. Yeah. It's a lot to take on, but it's like our job now. So we enjoy it and we love it. And we still get the question though, what is your full-time job? And I want to be like, what is your full-time job? We because, got two of them. Because a, a nine to five is a lot easier than what we do. It's so true. My parents didn't fully understand the fact that I hadn't had a job in years. Like they thought like, come on, Leanne, go back to work. And then they lived with us for a couple of months. And then right when they were leaving, my mom was like, I take it back. I don't even oh. know how you do it. And I was like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> finally, it's so true. It's so much work. And I know so many people appreciate the work that you do. And it is a huge responsibility when people are following you and trusting you with information. Um, I totally understand um, that feeling. And I think you guys are doing a great job. Where can people find more from you? ketoconnect.net yes. that's the website that's pretty much you can find everything from there if you search in youtube keto connect there's a bunch of stuff there too there's like a beginner series we have four videos that's good for people starting out we have like a pretty good beginner's keto guide on mm -hmm. our website if you want to check that out too and then the podcast keto for normies Leanne's been on it twice. You can check out her episodes. Those are good ones. And then I think some of the favorite videos we make on YouTube are our like top 10 at grocery stores because people like people to like see those, yeah. what's good to buy and what's good to stay away from. So we've done like Walmart, Aldi, Kroger, Publix. What else? Have Costco, we Whole, Whole Foods, Foods, Trader Joe's. Yeah. So if you're looking for good keto options, check out those videos. Cool. Guys, thanks so much for coming on again. I really appreciate it. You're awesome. Yeah. This thanks was for fun. Having us. And that does it for another episode of the Keto Diet Podcast. Thanks for listening in. You can follow me on Instagram by searching Healthful Pursuit, where you'll find daily keto eats and other fun things. And 
Check out all of my keto supportive programs, bundles, guides, and other cool things over at healthfulpursuit.com forward slash shop. And I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.